Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, maybe first we'll talk about the early days, the maybe. defining moments and inspirations. And shit. Early days of skateboarding for me, I grew up in uh, Sydney, Australia, and Bondi Beach was some early stuff. Fairfield had a mini ramp and a uh, boat ramp, and I moved Adelaide, Fulham Bowls. Uh, came down here for a while, met this dude Gus, he was pretty cool. Skated Brand, Mornington, uh, River's Edge, River's Edge. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of different parks here, and uh, well, had a good time down here for about a year, and then Moved back to Sydney, skated some more Bondi, and then got up on some cash, and then moved to the States, and kept skating. Well, what about what about the the guys killing it and sort of pushing it in those days? Um, like straight away, what comes up? Oh, uh, for the back in Australia days, like always looked up to Jason Ellis, Tyson Ben Pappas, uh, Adam Luxford, Dave Evans. Spin, Dave Spin Bodner, uh, so many cats, Renton, Dom, Kekic. There's so many good Australian skateboarders, man. It was just like so good to have all those dudes around and it's still good. And how, hard is, how hard is it to pick yourself up, you know, when you take a big slam like you did at the X Games? Like, how, like, how do you get up after that, man? Uh, pretty much been slamming my whole life on skateboards, like. Everybody slams, you know what I mean? Get good at it. Yeah, you kind of get good at it after a while. And that actual slam, I didn't really, I was just getting up. Like I had no idea what had happened for about a minute or two. And then like it, it all started coming back to me. But your, your original instinct is just to stand up and check how your body feels and like try to, you know, if you can still walk and stuff, you're like, all right, cool. Or if you if you're laying down and you're like, oh man, maybe you know sometimes the wind gets knocked out of you and it's kind of harder to uh, stand up right away. But at that point, I guess I was knocked out for long enough to where the wind came back. I don't think I was breathing for a while, but <laughs> but uh, stood up and moved on. Jason Ellis <laughs> picked me up, but it was only a fracture in the wrist, so it wasn't that bad. But I had a fractured vertebrae too, but. I didn't really know, like, I think there's probably a lot of adrenaline in my body, it still, I don't, got no idea. It's like after a car crash, you don't feel the shit till hours and hours later? Yeah. Did you feel it hours later or days later? No, it was about two minutes later, like, <laughs> when, yeah. when I was finally realised what was going on, like, I was really stiff, man, like, if you watch the footage in slow motion, like, my body almost folds in half. Yeah. Like, I'm just lucky my back didn't completely like tear apart. I don't know. Strong dude. And that is. <laughs> what about the the cash, the money? You're obviously not in it for the money. You're not. Earning I mean, everybody needs money, but I'm here for for to ride a skateboard. You know what I mean? It's pretty fun. Like still. <laughs> How do you feel like? It doesn't hurt to be able to pay rent. How do you feel like with other sports like basketballers and they get paid like millions of bucks and stuff and skaters are putting their balls on the line every day and yeah. they're making a tenth of what, you know? It's pretty crazy, but I mean, there's a lot more fans for the basketballers and the footballers. There's a lot of people that do ride skateboards, but uh, it's like the contests and stuff aren't as massive or regular as the, the actual uh, NBA or whatever. What's here, NRL, AFL? You know what I mean? I I got respect for all that stuff, and it's it's fun for me to go watch games and then drink a beer. So you know what I mean? It's just a matter of like what kind of scale everything's on. I think skateboarding will eventually get bigger, but I mean, there's some people getting paid pretty good, so can't really complain that bad. But I'm sure, like, if you were getting the basketball money, people would be quitting skateboarding after a couple. Of couple of years professionally and just build their own parks on an island somewhere or something. I think that's what Danny Way's about to be doing anyway. Pretty much. Yeah. Don't need to hurt yourself anymore. Yeah. That's good. Cool. Skate for the fun of it. What about the feeling of euphoria? Was it like flying through the air? It's pretty fun, like 
the feeling you get from skateboarding. I, I like the feeling you get after you land a trick that you've been trying for a while. You're kind of scared to make it, and you're like, oh, am I going to be able to do this? And you're like, Shh, boom, you make it, and you're like, whoa. Because it's like you get that feeling of being a kid again when you first step on the board and like, yeah, all right, is this possible? And then you're like, yeah, it is. But you're not sure at first, so that's the main ingredient in skateboarding where you get that euphoria from. Rolling away. Yeah, rolling away from some new moves or some hair wall stuff. What about when you're like one of the X Games? Like, how, you know, it's a, like, it's, a, it's a hard road to get there for any Aussie, really. I mean, just yeah. how, how what, like, what was going through here when you... I honestly wasn't as... Like, uh, I pictured Bob was probably going to win, and I'm like, cool. But I, I thought if I could make this 900, I was going to win for sure. And I didn't make it, so I was like, whatever, if I get second, it's cool. And then they're like, oh, you won. And I'm like, all right, I guess I won, whatever. But I didn't really feel in myself like that I'd won the contest because I wanted to make this 900, which I'm going to do next year. I was good. I would have got back up there and made it, but we had this supposed mega ramp thing going on here in Melbourne. I'm like, ah, oh, it's cool. I'll just wait for this contest in Melbourne. I'll make it in Australia. First time in Australia, I'll be tight. So I didn't even go back up, but now I wish that I had just gone back up and made it in the next try or two, which I would have for sure. You spotted the landing. Yeah, I was like, I had the trick, and it's like the contest is over. I'm like, oh, I'll just wait for Melbourne. Like, yeah, who's the top guys? Mm. For the mega ramp, it's pretty much Danny Way, Bob, me, Pierre, Luke. Uh, Rob Lorifus is coming up. There's only really a handful of guys that can step up and do some big stuff. You can physically do it. I think it's more mental, like, anyone, everybody is, we're all got two arms, two legs, half a brain. <laughs> it's pretty much, you gotta be mentally prepared for it, I think, is the main thing. But yeah, physical as well, I mean, you gotta do some sit-ups or whatever for a little bit before the contest comes. But it's a lot of mental preparation, I think. It's just a perfect corkscrew 720. <laughs> I felt good. I think the 900 is pretty much the exact same thing because you can't see where you land. And the 720, I couldn't see. I just threw it like that. You know what I mean? It'd be the same thing for the other one, but just only really tried it five times. Like the 720, I was trying a bunch before, before I even went to the event. Yeah. The 900, I was like, at Bob's house, I can only really go off the small side because the big side's over on this other side. For, so for me to try 900s, I would have to like fly all the way across here and like yeah. end up in a similar stitch as what happened with that 720. So I had to wait for the actual contest and then I only tried it in my run. <laughs> I'm like, damn. So. That's the only place you can use. At least now I'm confident enough to go, yeah, for, I'm not scared to spin a 20 foot 900. <laughs> That was it. It's going to feel good to land.